Hello. Hi, Piotr. Good to see you. I've been missing you, I have to say. We've been <laughs> separated for nearly two weeks. So how are you doing, Kevin? Yeah. It was great. We actually had a celebration this Friday for Virvar's first mm -hmm. anniversary because obviously we couldn't do it before. Uh, because of the corona and the limitations. It was very pleasant, very lovely atmosphere. Lots of people came actually oh, all out of, yeah, actually all almost the, everyone who was invited came, which is uh, very special these days, you know, and very nice familiar atmosphere. And I want to thank you all who will listen because a lot of you listen and are listening to these um, reviews for coming. I see you are also fine and well in Warsaw, and I also missed you. And I want to explain to our viewers and people who eagerly awaited our review why we didn't do it uh, for a week because the new issue is out of Vogue Czechoslovakia. Great story with um, Eva Herzigova. Uh, heads off to to the team again. Lovely. I I adored the story. The photographs are amazing. Um, and this is why we didn't want to mix the new issue with, uh, with our reviews and we wanted the new issue to get a full attention uh, that it deserves. And also they wanted us to get the full attention, uh, attention they think we deserve. So this is why they paused it. And I also wanted to say to everyone who was asking about me not having an article in this issue. I promise I will have one in the next issue, but there's a lot of good material in there to read. So everyone read it and I promise to come out with one for the next, for the September issue. Well done, what an intro. Excellent. So now we're ready, <laughs> you. we are back to do our job. The mission, Czech and Slovak moda fashion uh, continues, goes on. Uh, shall we start with Pietro Filippi? Sure. Filippi, Pietro Filippi. Okay. I can actually, I can actually, we can do it this week. So I will start with some and then you'll start with some. So I can actually start sure. with Pietro Filippi if you sure. don't mind. Well, to me, Pietro Filippi, uh, I'm not sure if you know, it's one of the local brands that try to do it big on a bigger scale. So they're actually doing uh, ready to wear as a Confectia, we say it. So mm -hmm. it's done in larger quantities. They have shops in um, shopping malls. So they're not really uh, doing it on a local designer and his atelier, but they're doing it as a brand, which I actually really love the idea because how are you going to do local and bringing it to a larger audience? You really need platforms and brands like this to do it on a larger scale. They get a good marketing. I mean, they're visible, so you really see them and they're accessible because in all the bigger malls in Czech Republic and Slovakia, they're pretty popular. People got to know them. They uh, reflect to the brand. A lot of people buy them. And what I really love about Pietro Filippi is that they do these residencies. We call it residency in Birvar. Just to explain to the viewers is when you give um, a designer or an author the opportunity to do their own vision for a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. um, and there were a few designers in the past that did their job nicely. I mean, just to mention a few, there was also Ivana Mentlova, who we'll be reviewing later on with her eponymous brand. Um, and now it's Monika Drapalova, who I absolutely like as a designer. I have a piece, I have a few pieces done by her. She's one of the um, fixtures on the Czech. Um, or Czechoslovakian fashion scene for some time. And I have to say with this collection, I absolutely see her style there. I see her vision there, which I love because what's very tricky with this is to bring your own vision to an existing brand and to bring something new, to bring a new wind without breaking, without breaking the vision of the brand itself. So what she did, she brought a piece of her with, with, with the respect to Pietro Filippi as a brand. A lovely video, I enjoyed it a lot. It's probably because it speaks to people like me who are fond of nature, who are fond of base, 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 neutral colors in your wardrobe. Uh, there's um, tie-dye, which we call batik elements in the collection, which is really in, but it's not only in, it's been in since forever, since the hippies, we have a tie-dye uh, around, you know, something I personally like. Um, there is a bit 
what's really tricky with the confection and doing ready to wear on such scale is tailoring, mm -hmm. which was something I saw as a bump, a little bump in this collection because we all know that a proper, super, super nice tailoring on jackets, on suit jackets and stuff like this, you can do best with made to measure or small concepts where there's a lot of uh, focus and attention on the execution of the garment. And it's usually, uh, you know, applicable to places where a smaller number of garments are being made. So to do it on a larger scale, it's always uh, a big challenge and not many can pass this challenge. I felt this was a bit of a weaker spot of the collection because you can see on the photos from the photos is not the perfect made to me measure jacket. It's a jacket that will of course be bought and sold, but it's nothing I would probably buy. But the rest of the collection to me, very wearable, speaking to the tight guys. She also said the whole idea was about slowing down back to the roots and it was done before Corona. So you can see that she also felt it's coming and she is very in sync with the vibes and with, with what's happening around her. And to me overall, a very good selection of a designer. Really respect to Pietro Filippi for choosing Monica Drapalova because I think that she's on point. Uh, with all that's happening in fashion and in the world. I like the collection for me. It was something I enjoyed. And I think it's going to be selling quite well. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty surprised. I'm pretty happy that this, this brand is featuring in our, uh, in our mission because uh, it takes me back to the beginning of the 90s, which is my favorite period to go back to when we all wanted to be more Western than the West. So this is the example of how careful we have to be with branding. Um, because establishing something that is called Pietra Filippi in Prague, it sounds today kind of ridiculous, but it's funny. It's part of, the, of, our, of, our, mm -hmm. of our experience from the 90s. We wanted to be uh, really European and it was a part of, of our attitude in the past. What I'm really um, happy about this brand is usually with the brands created by entrepreneurs not by designers mm -hmm. it's really hard to survive it's usually uh, the business people are trying to achieve uh, the goal is to get the money back as soon as possible and then only profit and profit must go steadily up up and up the sky is the limit so i guess if someone, yeah. if someone trees, trees to, grow trees grow to until forever exactly so if the brand was established in 1993 and is still going well it means that the balance between creative part and, and uh, the business part is achieved which is really really nice mm -hmm. um, the thing that bothers me is that the new majority shareholder uh, the guy who is called michael michka who took 80% of, 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 the, of the sharehold, claims that he's also very actively involved in uh, design process. That's not necessary. We don't need the business people to be involved in the design process. We have designers to do the designer job. We have the business people to do the business part. So don't do the mess when the things are organized properly, when people do the job they are supposed to do. In terms of, the, of how it looks, um, you totally ignored the men's <laughs> the men's part of it. You just focused. No, on I actually part. did. That's what I said about the tailoring. That was okay. the part about the tailoring and the, the jacket. The, the jacket is mm -hmm. uh, because this one is by uh, Philip Hiela Hiela Hiela. How how was the name of the of the Hieke? Right, Hieke. Hieke. Uh, I didn't took the name of the, of the designer. Okay. Anyway, there are two designers in charge. One is in charge of the men's wear. The, 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 the Monica is in charge of, of the women's wear. Um, what I do also like, they did employ the pattern designer uh, for, they have the custom made actually textile, exactly from the same designer who did this, the textiles for the brand uh, Nanish. Do you remember Nanish? Yes. It wasn't really great done. This time, I think uh, Jan Grabowski did a very good job with, with what we have. Um, this is the collection. I mean, when we say fashion, we usually mean the designer wear, right? But this is not true. This is not the whole picture. The whole picture is also we need clothing. We need like really uh, casual 
where brands that are being sell in mm. malls, they are equal players, equally important to industry, if not even more. What I also like about this brand, they do everything on a bigger scale, but still mm -hmm. counting numbers. They're not trying to go overboard. This is like, they have, a, I think the top limit is like 400 items of single, single look, which is great. So they, everything is under control. For the brand like this, I can only cross my fingers uh, and wish them good luck. I would like to see uh, maybe with the next collection something, mm -hmm. because you know, they're playing safe, because usually when you're doing something on a bigger scale, you have to do that. But I would like to see two or three looks which are a bit more challenging, also mm -hmm. attracting customers who are not yet buying the brand. Mm -hmm. but because I don't, I don't see that. At the moment, I see like they're trying to please all the existing customers who are not trying to exist the other customers. I, I don't feel like there is, there is a need maybe to extend, but it's also uh, it's good to introduce something a bit more exciting, a bit more challenging for both designers and both uh, marketing people, because I guess uh, they need to cooperate strongly to deliver the collection like this. But well done anyway. And anyway, well done for, for Pietro Clippi for this season, upcoming season. So now, Who is that? let's move to Bandayanda. Okay, you start. <laughs> Please. Don't even ask me, sure, I'd love to. Uh, uh, let me confess something. I really enjoy, I really love people who can take center stage, who enjoy the spotlight, who know how to pose for the camera, who enjoy paparazzi, who are the kind of celebrities and we know how to grab attention of, of viewers and keep them going for, for quite a long time. The problem is, there are always, uh, with the um, celebrity events, there are always old-fashioned media people involved asking tricky questions like, what are you actually doing for a living? And then usually the answer is, um, that we get is, I'm a writer, meaning I run, I have my own blog. Or I'm an actor, meaning I did the cameo in a sitcom. Or I'm an artist, meaning I'm a model or I'm a designer and the result looks like what we have here with Vandayanda. When I saw it for the first time, I thought it's, it's, it was a joke. I was, I was sure she's not serious. And I guess she is not serious because she's not a serious designer. There's not much design in it. There's not much fun. She's serious. She's Sorry? serious. She's serious? She's serious, yes. So uh, one of us is crazy. Either it's me or it's her. Um, I mean, come on, you cannot be serious with the stuff like that because it looks like uh, it's really hard to call it design. It's really hard to call it fashion. It's a big joke. It's like creating your own universe, uh, speaking loudly about this universe you're creating and then believing that the spell is going to work, that the words you're going to tell are going to turn into the but real that's, thing. She said it. She said it there. I'm not sure if you got a translation in, in English, but she said it in the article. Did you read that? I've, she it, said it. If you, if you, I'm citing because I actually took a screenshot of this. Mm -hmm. So I will just tell you and Go then on. you can continue and then I'll say my thing because you actually hit the nail on the head right now without probably most likely not being even aware of that she said it herself. Uh, I'm citing trying to translate it directly from Slovakian because her background is Slovakian, but she's living in Czech Republic uh, for some time. Um, if you lie to your head sometimes, if you lie to yourself, you start to believe in it and it starts to believe, it, it, it becomes true, right? This is what she says. If you, be, if you lie to yourself, it, she's not talking only about, about design, I guess, about anything. So... If you want to be anything in your life, you should be lying to yourself and then it yeah, becomes valid. Let's be honest. So this is what, no, I'm just telling you, this yeah. is exactly what I'm citing her. So now you can continue with the. So with this your is not routine. fashion, this is getting, get, going to be mental, actually. Right. So if you are cheating with yourself, of course you might believe that you have created some kind of reality and you can live in this dream world. The whole issue of the Vokce Hostovake right now is a bedtime story. 
So we know the bedtime stories are not the reality. It's not, you know, like the, it's not, sorry, it's not documentary. It's like uh, fiction. So we need to separate fiction from the fact also when it comes to fashion, I think. Uh, what I like about <laughs> Banda Yanda is that she sticks to this bullshit because I, do, I did read something. She said that uh, her collection, this particular collection is supposed to transport you from, even if you spend your summer in uh, some, I don't know, suburbs in Prague on the, on, the, on, the, on the swimming pool in Prague, you should get a feeling like you are in Saint Tropez. How can, uh, can I just say something right yeah. now? I ask myself over and over again, why is it wrong to be in Prague? Like, why, why do we have a problem with this? I have a huge problem with this, to be honest with you. Not even, I will say my thing about the clothes, but when you're particular at this point, I wanted to ask you, why is it such, why do we always want to be in French Riviera? People who travel and they know French Riviera is out. It's not the hotspot anymore. People, please understand there's other hotspots these days okay if you like french riviera i have nothing against it you can go there and spend your whole life there it's fine but what i'm trying to say is that we all, we need to be we we can't be ashamed of our where we are who we are we can't think always that outside is better you know i see no problem being on um on this swimming pool prague. which is actually legendary it's iconic in prague my mother used to go there when she was small because half of my family is from prague so she used to spend her summers there and it was a super hot spot you know there's nothing wrong with being in prague actually why not looking fabulous there i'd say i want to look fabulous is there you know so this is just my two cents so you see getting to the point that is all based on stereotypes this is all inspired by the stereotype of the girl who's going to the french riviera to get discovered as either a model or an actress during the Cannes film festival this is the story i'm getting from this collection but this girl is absolutely not ready she's wearing polyester baby doll dresses she's wearing curly stuff looking i'm not talking about i'm not gonna use the word tacky because this is really controversial right now but most of these clothes look cheap because they are cheap they are made out of cheap textiles there's no tailoring there's no fit you can do anyone can do oversized bow or pussy bow at the back or in the front it doesn't make the look, dress look fabulous you can pick the uh, archive dress from i don't know uh Giambattista valley for example right and make it your own and say oh this is my design this is my evening well look my red carpet look well come on we are old enough to remember the Giambattista valley we are old enough to remember victor and rolf we've seen this dress many many times before come on vanda don't fool around don't be um i mean She's got a personality because I saw her some pictures from the Carlo Vivara Film Festival. She yes. looks great uh, posing to the picture, for, for, to, to paparazzi. She always have a nice man as an accessory. Great idea. Always take the good looking guy. This is the best accessory you can get. But uh, let's be honest. All that doesn't make you a fashion designer. You are a personality, probably very nice girl, great looking, but uh, Maybe this is the peak of, of, of the achievement. Maybe you should, you should redefine yourself or look for a new definition. Not necessarily sticking to fashion, not necessarily sticking to design. We have really uh, a lot of good professional fashion designers in both Czech Republic and Slovakia. It's absolutely enough. We don't need another one. But anyway, a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun <laughs> watching this. Well, I will start. Uh, I will start where you left off, mm -hmm. and you said that she's probably a very nice girl. Now, for me, it's very hard to review her because I know her in person, mm -hmm. and she actually really is a very sweet person. Very mm -hmm. sweet person. Um, but and there comes the but, you know, as you said. The problem of this world we have these days is there's too much illusion. Mm -hmm. The problem why the world is in so many problems is there's too many illusions around. We do not differentiate between a reality or which, what is true and what is untrue anymore, which is very dangerous. It's a very slippery slope, okay? 
And this is exactly as I read to you. She says there, and it's her own words in the Vogue review, if you believe in something um, too often, you say it and you affirm yourself, it will become reality. This is not true. And I must say, this is not true. It's, uh, and it's also very dangerous to, to, to say it because it's only true to a certain extent. Uh, I absolutely applause to her for, for being positive and say, you know, you can be anything. You can really achieve something if you believe in it. This is one side of the story. But the second side of the story, there's many, many other nuances around it. It's too much of a complex topic to be saying it right now. So I'll rather stick to the fashion. Now, I reviewed Van Dianda, I believe, two times before. Uh, this is my third review of her. And uh, I must say one thing, which you don't probably know because you didn't uh, probably inspect her previous collections to, to a greater detail, but the tailoring is actually much, much better. And this is thank, thank, thanks to a person that's mentioned in the thank you. She said, uh, and it's, it's a small name in the end of the thank yous. I'm not sure if everyone noticed, but I know and I noticed. It's Boris Kral. And Boris Kral is uh, her, a very good friend. It is actually one of the most talented designers we have right now on the scene. I work with him closely, so I can affirm this. If you notice, um, we have these, in Virvar, we have these velvet um, tuxedo jackets with these ostrich feathers coming out of them. Very nicely done, beautiful. It's by Boris Kral. And his collection, inspired by Baywatch, was amazing. But what I'm trying to say, he's a real professional and really paying attention to details so kudos to van dianda because what she can do and you actually said it her, yourself as well she can surround herself with people that you know push her a bit further or let's say teach her the stuff that she she is not really fond of or she can't do properly now i don't know the right expression i should use here but you know what i mean she has a nose for for picking the people who will right. let's say make the t tailoring much better for her which is no it's noticeable i mean i inspected the photos there's a lot of work with the bastier which is hard to do and it's his signature also the ostrich which is extremely painstaking to apply on on any fabric not to speak of something so tricky as silk so there's a lot of application of ostrich feathers this is boris kral's work there and i see it and kudos to this because you know she she knew what to do I, she she doesn't know she, she doesn't know how to do this so her friend who is good at this will help with this and this is fine i mean i see a huge huge honestly there's much better tailoring right there and people who who know what i'm talking about they will know but the name Vanda Hood, I was, you actually said Gian Battista Valli and uh, Victor and Rolf, you said, I believe, I would call it Valentino Hood, for example, because I see a lot of mm -hmm. Valentino mm -hmm. there. Not just the silhouettes and the colors, but also the, the, uh, 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 the, the name, the, the, bre the, 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 the okay. how do you say that? The lettering, the lettering, yes. on, the lettering right. print mm -hmm. on the, the lettering prints, which are even the font is very similar. So Absolutely. you get the silhouette and the, the cut of Valentino. And then you also get the very similar, you know, print that he's using at the moment. The brand is very heavily using it at the moment. So she also did the lamp. She also did the chair. She also did the ashtray. This is, as I said, this is, exactly what i said in my first review i ever done of her she is speaking to the influencer instagram audience of the jour the question is how much longer is this going to be relevant and how much longer is this going to be around my prediction is not much longer so she yes she has a very strong message in what she's doing she's not straying away from this on one hand, big respect to this. She's being herself and she's not moving anywhere from it, you know? This is what she's been doing from day one yeah. until now. But I'm asking, I'm asking if this is going to be working for the near future and if not, what is she going to be? And that's exactly what you said, you know? Uh, 
Uh, so for me, I so, mean, you know, I'm, 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 oh, I believe she's a smart girl, definitely, because to make what she to, to achieve what she has already achieved, you can't be stupid. You have to be really creative. You have to get the side guys, of course. You have to understand how to play uh, the show part of the fashion industry. How to create a boss how to create the brand because this is uh, already existing brand i know she's she's been she's been, she's been uh, invited to the very uh, important venues like karlova Vary film festival she's been interviewed in television etc etc i'm not saying she's stupid but no she definitely but, knows how to sell herself mm -hmm. this is the type guys that's what i'm saying but the question is how much longer is it going to be but, but, like but, but, this but, type but, of we, know, we know it was a big mistake wasn't it right to let people who are not into design take over control of the fashion business in a way to create it, you, know, you know this is the exactly the way i was looking at it just maybe a few months ago but I have to be honest with you, I reevaluated this. I think it, it's part of history. It's, it's part of, it's, it's a mirror of, of the world we are still living, but it's slowly going away, thankfully. Slowly and thankfully it's going away. But this is the part of who we were. This is the part of our evolution, fashion evolution, evolution as people. So I'm looking at it. Yes, this is the mirror of society and we will be evaluating it one day from upstand, you know, from, from, from a distance. And we already are doing it a bit now, but I think it belonged in the history. I'm not saying it's the best part of it or the most inspirational or the most creative or the, or the most positive, but it has its place there and it's there. And this is the part of it, you know, this is the part of it. Right. So but by um, you know by casting a spell and by saying that you can do uh whatever you think you can you can achieve everything you know this blah 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 inspirational blah 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 that is going on all over instagram since instagram not, but people already start to see it's not true many people are disappointed because they actually finally, finally how long do we have this stupid instagram thing going on and you know finally people realize it's it's just a bullshitting. You no, know, we, we must say, Piotr, to be sure, but to be fair, we must say Instagram is a good servant, but a bad master. You know, it's a very good tool for people who can use it with moderation and, and with sure. real work, you know. And, you know. So, so, you know, on one hand, it's good, but on the other, it's causing so much damage. I mean, there's really so many clinical studies done on this already. So, yes. On one hand, good. On the other, don't believe everything you see there. Don't believe everything people are claiming there. It's all a bubble. It's mostly usually all a bubble, which is not going to get you nowhere but into desperation and many times into some mental disorder. Uh, sadly, but... but I'm, so, what I'm also about trying to say that it's not Vanda's fault. She just used the opportunity. She's a clever girl who used the opportunity and took her time and took a chance. And she's a winner. She's a clear winner here. This is the fault of the people in industry who said, okay, so let's stay away from, uh, let's say, print media or television right now. Let's switch our intention, our budget, our interest to internet. Let's go to influencers. This is the influencer era. This is the decade of influencers. So the thing is, this is how the people who are mostly the entrepreneurs deal with the, uh, how, to, how they're trying to organize business with only one goal, to earn more. We don't care about design, we don't care about quality, we don't care about people who are buying this. The only thing that counts is the volume. Make it yeah. bigger, more bigger. Yes, but uh, to be honest with you, with the case of her collection, I was really examining examining it closely as I do everything I do and I do it properly. So I really examined the actual pieces one by one. And to be honest with you, I know how much, how, how much effort and time it makes to make, for example, this silk dress with the feathers. 
It's not so easy. So to make money on such a collection, you need to do a lot of pre-orders and it's really time consuming. So I guess that the money she can make on these pieces is the, maybe the less um, you know, elaborate pieces like the, the shirt or maybe the skirt. But she had a lot of pieces there that are really complicated to make and they, they, oh make some, they take some time to make. So um, not, not so easy, you know. I actually think okay, that... She's going to just stick to the t-shirts and there's, you know, Cinderella skirts. I, so. I, I actually think she's going to make a few maybe of these dresses, but it's not going to be a lot because it's going to cost some money and it's going to take some time. So, but I mean, I absolutely... I'm there with you. As I say, she's a very sweet girl. She's a clever girl. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just, you know, another thing is she can only do this in this context, in Czechoslovakian context where people know her already as an influencer, as a digital influencer. So she has her audience and she has her clientele. I'm not sure how this would work if she crossed the border to Germany or, or even Paris, you know. I mean, to come up with a collection like this, it would probably not even get noticed because people would just say, what yeah, is this? You know, I mean, she really, so, so she's really, yeah, she's really using the, the potential of being known in her own geography, which is also very smart, again, very smart, and uh, to create her group of fans and and clients that she's going to cater to. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this, but I'm just asking myself, I would really love her to see in a different position because I actually think, and I told her this myself, there is a potential. There is a potential, and I really think that maybe if if, it, if there, if she gets a bit older and she maybe makes another two, three collections like this, maybe she will actually arrive to a point where she will move somewhere differently, and that's what I would love to see. And I would probably leave it as that. Uh, I would like to see Vanda doing a reinventing herself completely, even within fashion world. But I think she's ready to create something that it doesn't exist yet. And this is this going to be a challenging. That was going to be an achievement for, for a girl like her because she's really creative and hardworking, I believe. You wouldn't be that successful at, without working. So she's, she's definitely, we have to give it to her. But uh, no matter her fault, she's not going to make it as a fashion designer, at least not yet. No matter okay. how good collaborator she has. Let's move to Ivana Mentlova. You want to take it from me or do you want me to start? Sure. I, will, I, will start I will start because I'll be very short. Um, <laughs> Even shorter, I can tell you. <laughs> okay. I know because I know your, your uh, attitude towards the real letter. I will be very short. Very hard for me to review, obviously, because there was a very similar collection we see with Farah and Mikaela Kay very garment very very similar line i mean some garments are almost identical there's a uh, little variations in the details like the trench coat here is much more oversized and it has more volume than the faras one um the the leather shirts almost identical so the portfolio i mean is very very similar and it also comes from the from the fact that it's made out of fur and leather, lots of leather, a shirling used and stuff. Mm -hmm. With me, um, I must say that uh, it's, it's something I like. It's minimalistic fashion, as I said before, and I admitted it before the whole world. We had a lengthy discussion on this subject. I like leather. It's something I cannot still give up. Um, the thing is with Ivana Mentlova, and it must, it must be said because it's fair, uh, she's been on the market for much longer than Mikaela K. I mean, that's a very, very young, fresh brand. They're around for a year. I mean, it's their first collection. So she's been doing this for some time now. Um, there's no real evolution in a sense that she's also sticking to what she can be do best. And this is good. Um, but the problem here is also that she is building it around the persona of her persona of uh, of the of of being an influencer and it's something which is a very thin ice to skate on these days because if you look at her i'm not sure if you examine this i actually went because i always do this i go to instagram to check out the profile i don't have much time other times so this is good opportunity for me to see the brands and people and there is a lot of 
uh, attention to detail. I mean, if you look at her Instagram, it looks very airy and breezy, but there is so much effort put into making this persona, this image, which is clever. And again, kudos for taking time and effort to carefully and painstakingly create this image around yourself. But this is something which is, as I say, slippery slope, because if you create, if you if you base it around your persona and this whole, you know, digital influencer era will be soon over, you need to have a solid brand based on the stuff that you're doing. So um, this is something I would be afraid of a bit, but otherwise, I mean, there's not much I can say because from my point of view, um, I cannot really, I don't see any faults there. I mean, even with the tailoring and the way the things are done they look like they're relatively or very very good qual quality the cuts the silhouettes is something i like as well but as i say not much more to say about it mm -hmm. from my point of view i'm not gonna repeat myself from i'm not gonna say again what i did say two weeks ago it doesn't make sense i don't understand why uh experienced person who is uh on for quite a long time the person who quotes Vivian Westwood on her Instagram that you mentioned, because she 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 dedicated one of her posts to Vivian Westwood, does the whole collection. I, I missed that. I missed that. Was it recently or? I think it was like in the middle of her Instagram account, so it was like. Quite oh, I didn't go that far. I uh, didn't go that far. But anyway, you know, it's it's really pity that the the designer who can do and work with the other materials is using just leather for her entire collection. This I don't understand and there is no excuse. Um, there is no point to talk about it. The other thing that, that uh, bothers me is that some looks look, will remind me some of the previous looks from Hermes collection, from Barbary. I've seen the shelling many, many times before. I don't feel like we need another shelling like this, this time from the Czech designer. So whatever we do is better always to get away from what we have already seen and just try to create something really unique, especially when we're quoting and we are trying to be unique. But the most important thing, uh, if you are a big fan of Ethan Westwood, uh, and if you are not the beginner, if you are a really experienced person in the fashion industry, I would like to see a very strong stand in whatever you're standing for. And I don't get this message. I don't really get it from viewing her Instagram, from going back to her previous collection. I don't know what this brand, what this designer stands for. This is quite confusing for me. If I just may add, this mm -hmm. is what I mentioned before. She also had a line for Pietro Filippi in the past, which mm -hmm. was very successful for Pietro Filippi, because I think that what she can work with nicely is the minimalistic silhouette. She, 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 she's a fan of minimalism. I am a fan of minimalism as well. So this is something I absolutely agree on. She has her own signature, but yes, all the points that you said taken. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you know, if we, uh, and I'm a fan of the same thing, by, of the same thing, by, but I call it modernism. So I think if you do the modernism, modern collection, you can always succeed and it's go always going to sell because there's always a certain group on the market looking for the stuff like this. We are Jill Sander fans, right? Where are we still Helmut Lang fans? Helmut so Lang, absolutely. Helmut Lang forever. One of my top is five. Mm -hmm. So you see? So this is our message to Ivana. And now Tatiana Kovashikova. So I'll start with Tatiana who is, again, step back again, in time. Not much to say about this here. I'd probably you start and then I say mine. This is gonna be very fast for me. I mean, I thought we're gonna stay in the 90s, but we are moving back to the 80s, uh, which is a very colorful, legendary decade, both in fashion and everything, in, in history. Uh, it's really surprising. Uh, and crazy how people are trying to reinvent the, what was created in the 80s and what they consider as 80s. She's focused on uh, just black and white looks and she's, she's been inspired by Helmut Newton photography. Uh, this inspiration is 
pretty clear in terms of how she's organizing, how she's dealing very with Very obvious. Those. Mm -hmm. Very obvious, yes. It, it, it was, I mean, it was explicit. But uh, there's too much of it, first of all. Then there is, you know, when you, I, I'm going to say it again, when you reduce color just to two most demanding, white and black, you really need to be very, very creative with the silhouette, with the cut, with the tailoring. There is some tailoring in it, but there is no, nothing really new, nothing invented, nothing moving fashion forward. There is, uh, I don't feel like this is, being, it's been inspired by Helmut Newton, who was one of the top photographers of the 20th century, but I got a feeling like it was mostly, in terms of style, inspired by the sitcoms from the 80s not the high-end fashion from the 80s. It's not Dior from the 80s, it's not Chanel from the 80s, it's not Ungara from the 80s, I don't see this, it's not definitely modular, I'm sorry? I saw a bit of Saint Laurent there, I mean with, the, mm -hmm. with the stilettos, with the stilettos, the black stilettos and the very sexy but kind of sophisticated Parisian bar atmosphere that wanted to be there, obviously, like it was the intention and uh, it, again, why you why do you use such a strong aesthetic and then put the in one of the photos I noticed there's again the Bottega square sandal. I'm not sure if you noticed there's a as they walk these two ladies, there's this Bottega square sandal which is absolutely so typical for this year and this season and you know the, the aesthetic of these days. And why don't you stick to it, you know, and mix these elements? Um, this is something that struck me. And uh, I mean, it's probably all that I have to say about this. Mm -hmm. uh, the funny thing is the final look is like a, a tribute to Oscar de la Renta to me, uh, which is definitely not, the, I mean, Oscar de la Renta was one of the, uh, of, of, of these designers who created his, uh, look at the very beginning of the career and he stick to it and got stuck to it in, in, in a way but why why at the end of this collection there are so many things i don't understand uh, nice concept the very nice way to reinvent 80s by reducing colors but then mm -hmm. not so many things exciting happening in this collection sorry to say for me, as I said, as I said, there were nice moments where it took us back in time. It was sexy and it was it was classic and it was. But I saw too many references there as well, not executed to perfection. And this is what I want to advise all of the designers: if you cannot, if you take an idea from someone else, which is a very strong and popular idea, known widely, and you don't do it with your own twist or you don't execute it to real perfection, don't, don't do it. It's better not to do it because it ends up looking boring. like... A, it's boring. It's not like taking something out of the history context and presenting in 2020. We want a new take on 80s, right? What we are looking for... We, I've been living in the 80s. I was a toddler, of course. But I remember 80s precisely. I have experienced this aesthetic. I don't want to repeat the story. I've been there already, so I want a new take on 80s. Yeah. That's, that's applies to 90s, that's going to apply to 2010, yes, 2020. Yes. We need a new take of what was already created, right? This is what we're looking for in fashion. This is what the fashion is, in fact. Yeah. Constant reinvention, reinterpretation. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, if I may just uh, compare it to something, what you said, it's very interesting because what comes to my mind is architecture. We know that in architecture, there are original styles of architecture, uh, like Gothic, Baroque and everything. And then were neo styles that actually made a reference to a certain already uh, uh, something that already happened. Mm -hmm. But it was so distinct and done with such a twist that it got its own name. You can see the traces of the original style, like neoclassical or, you know, there's many more, but you yeah. can, you, it was so distinct, yet it was referencing it something, but yet it was so distinct. And that's how, that's exactly how to do it, you know? 
in fashion, for example, like we don't have these names for these styles, but you know what I'm talking about. And I, I, I absolutely agree. If you're going to do something that was already done, do it. So it leaves a mark. So it's not a replica, but it leaves, it actually leaves a mark. Mm -hmm. And that leads us to Lida or Leda. How do we say the name? The last one. Mm -hmm. Is it the last one? Okay. Yes. Oh, the Leda or Lida? But we see a Lida. Of Lida, it's, as it's, it's double E. Mm -hmm. okay. It's actually, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it's the name of our horse, Lida. <laughs> so I know the how horse. to read. Yeah, well, the the my daughter rides a horse. She's a horse rider, and her name her horse name is Lida. It's written the same way, so that's Do why you have I know. A link to the designer of the collection, or does it? Or it's just coincidence? No, I think it's from the I think it's from the Greek, which was Leda. Was okay. uh, she came from? Uh, she came from um, this bird, um, Labuch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know Labuch? You know yes. what it means? Uh, uh, swan. 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 Mm -hmm. Came from a swan. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So I believe uh, from a mythical yeah. story. Okay. So it's later from from uh, from 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 mythology. Um, what can I say about this collection? By uh, okay, it's called Touch Me. Uh, yet again, Touch Me in the eighties was a very big hit by Samantha Fox. Uh, she sang Touch Me. <laughs> Uh, I want to feel your body. Do you your heartbeat next to mine. Absolutely. So there is a lot of poetry, really high-end poetry. There is a lot of high beat in this song. It was a huge hit. But uh, what Samantha Fox did great was she said something that sounds tempting, but she meant completely something totally opposite. She didn't want to be touched. And I got the same feeling with this collection. Why is it called Touch Me when we have these looks uh, that are actually saying, don't touch me, I'm a very precious thing taken from the uh, different reality. I'm in a mood for, I'm reading a book about solitude and this collection to me uh, looks like a perfect picture to go with the solitude uh, definition. This is the, the, the collection for people who enjoy the company of their own. I don't, I got this strange, very weird feeling. Uh, what I like about this collection, she did again, uh, we have the custom made prints, which are inspired by the air view of the rivers that are reprinted. There's a lot of thing going on. The final result cannot be judged because the movie that we have and the pictures attached are so dark that we have to focus mostly on the silhouette. Unfortunately, I have to say that. I would love to see the close up of the textile because mm -hmm. I can't judge this. But what I like about how she plays with the with, with textile is it's pretty interesting. It's very fluid. She plays with it like the really like she's trying to lead the reverse. So it's it's really uh I would say it even flawless in some of the mm -hmm. silhouettes. Some of the silhouettes as well as are surprising to me. I don't understand what is, uh, there's the, the down jacket. Where does it come from? It's really, you know, out of the blue, among mm -hmm. very nice, interesting dresses, there's the down jacket. There are some references to oriental style. I'm not sure if it's intentional. Uh, I wouldn't say it's, it's no, sorry. She, did she say she's, she's inspired by kimono? It wasn't her. It, it was her, I don't probably. Think it was her. I don't think it was her. Okay, there is something that looks to me, the way she provides textiles looks a bit like you do when you work with kimono, but on the other hand, it's this exactly the same thing we do with sari. So it's a very Asian thing of playing with the long part of, of, of textile, which is really interesting because the final result doesn't look at all oriental. It looks very interesting, gony, nightwear style. Uh, what I don't understand, but I also cannot judge because this, this movie is such a moody movie. It's, it, it's interesting, it's funny in a way, uh, but it's very dark. So mm -hmm. we don't see that much close as we'd like to see. I know what's in but I got hooked. I got hooked. I think it's pretty interesting. It's very promising. I would like to see the high-res pictures with some details. 
how it is done because it's really hard to, to say at the moment. But in general, it's a very promising collection. I don't know much about the designer, but it's very promising to me. I must admit, I don't know much about the designer myself. I examined them closely for the first time, probably. Uh, I'll say what I liked about it. And that was the, for example, the combination of color and the big opulent jewelry, which I love. If you notice that dark, bold, but kind of muted um, purple, dress and then the big gold ring with it it's very 60s boho but very rich boho uh, think Yves Saint Laurent in his Moroccan villa you know this is something I love um, then I also loved the idea of the paternoster you know the elevator that the the way they presented the clothes it was very for example I'm not sure if you know, but these elevators were forbidden because of security. And so a few of them are still around. And there was a lot of them in Czech Republic, namely in Prague, um, that, that are really rarity these days. So I actually love that they showed something which is coming out of history slowly. But it's so, I mean, Pater Noster is a symbol. It's not just an elevator, it's a symbol. And the way they presented the clothes... So you were kind of waiting what's going to appear there, like the same way you're in an elevator of this type and you, you actually are blink, you're a blink for a second and then you disappear. So I love that. Mm -hmm. uh, the prince reminded me a bit of Teresa Rosalia Kladoshova. I'm not sure if you picked on the same vibe, but I did because I worked with it closely, which I'm not saying is bad. But I overall, I love the idea that they can combine the opulent, dark, rich, sophisticated colors with the big jewelry, which they state that it's the intention, because I love the minimalistic look with a touch of something rich and explicit, you know? On the other hand, um, the same, I, I don't, I'm not sure about the tailoring. I tried to examine it closely. It's really hard to see how the clothes are done. It would really love it would really help, sorry, to be able to touch the clothes and see them in real life. And also um, with Lida, you know, the concept, I, I, I really want to see them in the future, where they're going to go, because it's fragmented. As you said, there's the long gowns and then there's the, the puffy long coat, you know, mm -hmm. and which really bothered me i must say and there's no better expression for it bothered me was the big bold loud prints mm -hmm. the prints on the i'm not sure if it were scars or it was a part of the gown big bold print and a gown does not go together it doesn't work together i've rarely seen it work it working rarely if ever big bold print is something which is made for t-shirts for bomber jackets for i'm um, whatever but long gowns excluded you know so this is something which was uh, a fragmentational element for me personally but i loved a few elements there including the presentation and i'm not really familiar with the brand or their history enough to to say more about it mm -hmm. Well, it's funny that you mentioned the elevator because we have two elevators in one day, right? The one used by Van Dayan at the Four Seasons Hotel, fancy five-star hotel downtown Prague, which, has, uh, which is a part of the, of the modern Prague, of the modern history. But this one, exactly as you said, is a part of the Czech heritage. It's just like uh, saying that we are from Prague, we are using, we are attached to what was the part of our experience. Uh -huh. it's, it's very interesting, it's very nice when you pick up things that are local and turn yeah. them into a concept, right? Because with, the, with Vanda, for example, the, I was looking for, I was just curious why with so many film references, she's not taking the best of the Czech film industry. There are so many good Czech films for inspiration. Uh, unlike uh, Lucia or Lucia, I don't know how do you say the name of, of the designer from Lida. I think it's Lu Lucia, Lucia, how do you say that in Czech? Lucia. 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 
uh, she is using her local context and using it and creating something absolutely her. This, this is what I like. So, so uh, also points for that, for doing a very interesting, nice uh, story because when you, this elevator is going down and you are really curious how it's going to end. Is it going to end with something dramatic or something? It's a very, I mean, it's a very original idea for me because I've, we've not seen this before. I just need to say we've seen again in this batch of presentation uh, something done at Cash Only Studios. Yes. Yeah, I get it. I get it. It's very practical if you bring all your, all your clothes there and you can do it in one go. But then as we see that these original places and settings have their own vibe, they have the... Again, use Lotsi, you know, which adds to the. We've seen that in also the Zuzana Kubitschkova, if you remember, that was done in these uh, local vineyards with these old fo phones from the 90s that you were commenting on. But it had the real zeitgeist and it had the real. Again, use Lotsi, you can feel like it's, a, it's actually happening. It's real. It's not a fictional place, you know. So. For me, it, it really added to, 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 the, to the positive feeling I had from it. But um, something which you again said, and that's what I said about the Podolska Plavare, about the Podolska swimming pool. Why should we always run away somewhere else? I mean, we should really start loving what we have, have, be, have respect for what we have, uh, cite it a lot, reference it a lot, make it into new references you know there's so much to build on we have such a great history we both czechs and slovaks we had so many different influences here from turkish culture to hungarian culture to all these different cultures they all brought something different in terms of styles colors uh, just really just so explore, many different just simply yes. explore it just, just don't go traveling just stay and explore yeah, just, it. just Create on what we have here. We're local brands, you know. We Italians do their own thing. French people do their own thing. Why don't we do our own thing? This is what I keep asking. Why is so everything behind our borders is better than than what we have here? And this is not which the right. Which is not true. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. we have already seen many, many interesting collections so far. What Absolutely, also, uh, it, saddens what me. it saddens me so much, you know, when I see it because our. Our, even our culture is so respected. I'll, if it's, you know, even just when you look at the, that even when you take into consideration people like Milos Forman or I don't know, we have so many inspirational people who are so respected outside, but we, we, we kind of always run away somewhere else. So there's so much to build on. There's so much to build on. There's so much history left to build on. And I really hope that our designers will be more, really more local. Then and they will create their own universe. Worldly. This is what we want from designers, right? We just we don't need just clothes. We don't need just collection. We want them to create the universe, their mm -hmm. own, to tell the story, to get into the storytelling. This is the challenge yeah. for designers. So we can relate to it because when you relate to something, it's much easier to live in it, to breathe in it, to kind of sink in with it, you know. And uh, as I say, we, we need to be, firstly, we need to be ourselves and then we can be worldly. It's always like this. First, you need to embrace yourself and then you can make, be successful outside. It's, it never goes the other way around. So this is what I stress over and over and over again. And which brings us to the fact that this is not the last review because there's much more to come. And I'm not sure if you know, but there's other designers to review. I actually was in the wrong impression that this would be our last, but then I received the file, so there's more to come. So I can't, this was kind of interesting, I must say, this badge was interesting. So I'm ready for the next week to review uh, more with you and uh, yeah, excited about it. Can, can, we, can we make a deal about at the end of this? of our mission, at least chapter one of this mission, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it forever. I don't know about you, but I want to stick and do it forever. We need to well, if, it if, they will, if they will want us to do it, you know, that's they another. have nothing to say. They have to want us. I mean, what, what other choice they have? But anyway, let's make a deal that the end of uh, this, let's say, season, we'll make our pick of, let's say, five to seven or eight brands, designers, that we'd like to mention 
once again and explain why. So it's our personal pick out of all this collection that we have seen so far and it's gonna see next week. We're gonna select our top five. No, 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 top five no, is no, fine. Top five. five is fine, I think. Uh, I think it's fair also because it's seven is too much, I think. Five is, is five. fine. Um, and will be so nice that we'll only mention the ones we want to mention. Yeah, so exactly. let's just do the five. Let's not be, let's not do the, the bad stuff, like not the five worst than the five best. Let's you just say, let's do, yes, you let's just do the five that, that we want to mention again. I absolutely agree. I'm so on to it. I'm in. Me too. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm going to see you next week. Until next yes. week, we're saying ciao.